here with you a little stomp box design. It's a nice sounding stomp box, it's simple, and it's relatively inexpensive. Uh, a lot of musicians may already have a lot of the things that I'm utilizing. There's a lot of good designs out there, different box styles, different pickups. This just happens to be um, what I came to use through trial and error. It works for me, it sounds nice. Um, and I'd just like to share this with you. Uh, remember, stomp boxes aren't just for the blues. Blues are great, I love the blues, but you can use the stomp box on many different types of music in, in my show as I play songs ranging from Hank Sr. to Johnny Cash to Leonard Skinner. Mumford and Sons works great for all of that stuff. I don't definitely don't use it on, on every song, but um, a lot of my original music uh, really in, helped inspire, helped me write a lot of cool tunes. So if you're on the fence whether or not you want to even try using a stop box, give it a try. It's a lot of fun. So the com components for the, the stomp box system I'm using, one, we got a box. And we'll kind of touch on what I'm using and uh, some other options of that. Um, two, we need a microphone, decent microphone and cord, um, a towel, a little bag to put the microphone in, also a rug to set the stomp box itself on. Uh, then we also need, obviously, a way to amplify it, to, to run this microphone, and I got a mixer and a speaker going on here. And I'll touch a little more on that down the line here on the, uh, the details of what I'm using. And most importantly, we need a foot. <laughs> a foot to stomp on that box. So I got a wooden box going on here. Now, be creative. It's, uh, this happens to be a box that my grandfather and grandmother gave to me. It was a box, an old box of brown and sharp. Some kind of uh, measuring instrument was originally stored in here. They gave this to me. I was going to store, I stored my harmonicas in it for a while. Started playing around with it and it ended up being one of my favorite boxes to use. So there's a lot of different things you can use out there. Uh, be creative. You know, you can find something to use, or you can make something. Uh, this this particular box that I'm using, just so you know, is about each section 16 by 8, two and a half inches tall. That's half of this box. Just happens to split open, and I utilize it with both feet. Uh, you certainly don't need to have a divider in there to be hinged. This just happens to be what I'm using. Uh, if I was to build something from scratch, which I've got a few prototypes, I would um, probably start with something with a half inch 7 16th side walls, you know, approximately this size, and um, put a, an eighth inch top on it, maybe quarter, maybe half, you know, I've tried some different things. This happens to be 7 16 board. Uh, this is this happens to be hardwood, but softwoods work well too. They just have this box happens to be that way. This has got about an eighth inch thick top on it. It's glued together real well. It's, it's a pretty sturdy little box. I'm sitting when I'm playing this and tapping. I'm not standing on this. I tried using this box closed. It sounded terrible. I could not make it sound good. In fact, I put it aside. wasn't even going to try it again. And as I experimented with other things, uh, one of the keys I found was letting something be open like this. And then, as I said, I actually set this on top of a rug. So that is key, having the bottom open. All right, for the microphone part of what I'm doing, I'm using a uh, Shure SM57 instrument mic. It's about a $100 microphone. It's a great mic for miking guitar, amplifiers, uh, different drums. So it's a pretty versatile mic. Also works fairly well for vocals, depending on what you're doing. So it's a great mic to have around. Many of you may already have one of these. 
that was my situation is I had one from miking my guitar amp and I said hey, I'm gonna put this thing in there see how it sounds and it turns out it sounds quite well I'm sure there's a lot of different mics out there that would work equally well I saved about a hundred dollar mic very versatile something you can use in a lot of different uh, applications even other than, than the snap box get yourself a good cord I like to put the microphone in a bag. I happen to have an old Royal Crown bag. It certainly doesn't have to be a Royal Crown bag. A sock, something there again you can be creative and experiment because every little aspect of this changes the sound. You got to kind of come up with what works for you. I do that and then I actually got a little towel that I wrap this up in on top of it. So I'm actually putting the the towel around this and then placing it underneath the box. So I got a rug for under the box. This happens to be a 24 by 36 inch kitchen rug folded in half. It's 24 by 18. I lay that on the floor and everything kind of sets on that. A lot of times uh, I maybe put an extra piece of carpet down or the stage I'm on usually would have some sort of carpet uh, so I may even add a little more to this, but this usually does the job. All right, for my um, amplification, I happen to be using a, a PV XR8600 powered mixer along with a PV PR15 speakers. I run a couple of those. Typically, that's all I'm running that in a floor monitor. Uh, there's some situations where uh, I utilize a subwoofer. Um, subwoofer definitely adds a lot to the sound but is not necessary okay so what I'm doing I'm rolling off the highs the mids the lows I'm running a little about above 12 o'clock most of the time also reverb I don't care for any reverb on this I'm gonna I'm usually using reverb on my vocals and on my uh, guitar so I'm gonna roll that reverb all the way off Last but not least, the um, component that has a huge impact on your sound along with everything else is the foot. I tend to wear a, a hiking boot uh, or a tennis shoe type shoe. Usually when I'm playing I have a pair of hiking boots that I'm comfortable with and that's what I wear. But the point is what you wear for a shoe makes a huge impact on the sound also. So try different things. If you don't like what you're hearing, I've used cowboy boots. Didn't care for it with this box, but different shoes, harder soles, softer soles. No sole, you can go barefooted. It's kind of hard on the foot, but different sound. There again, the sky's the limit. Got a rug going on here. I like to fold this one in half. We're on carpet here. So if this was a, uh, a stage, maybe a wooden stage or something, I got another rug I would lay down underneath that. You gotta experiment with that. All these little aspects will change the sound. This sounds good down here. Box. We got the microphone. SM57 in the bag, wrapped up. I tend to put the head of the microphone down this way. It does make a difference. Um, there again, you got to experiment with um, every situation to be a little bit different. I have a slot in the box here for the cable to come through, so I'm not putting pressure on the cable. I'm going to center that microphone under this compartment into the slot and it's all together. Wonderful. I got my 24 inch bar stool, which for me I like to slide that right up to the edge of the box. I happen to have a tambourine going on here too. Just a little fun little stuff we work with.